Um, let me take the first point first. Uh, shale gas and shale oil, the, the extraction procedure is still sort of uh, hydraulic fracturing, i.e. you pass, uh, pass high-strength steam onto uh, shale rock, that cracks the rock, releases, uh, releases what it holds, be it oil or, or gas. Now, there are two sides of it. The, the oil revolution and the gas revolution have, have sort of gone more or less in tandem. Uh, in the U.S. Now, the oil bit of it is 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 more more sellable. It's more more instantly sellable. What happened with with uh, fracked shale gas was that it's created so much abundance of of natural gas in the U.S. is that at one point in 2012 the the price of gas went below two dollars. Now, what that has done is uh, not just not just uh, shale gas. If you look at the natural gas markets uh, as a whole, um, you know Qatar is a major major producer uh, of LNG. And look at the the wider dynamic in the in, in the gas markets is that a couple of things have happened. First of all, the U.S. gas price is completely disconnected from the global markets. It's just, there's a tremendous difference between the U.S. gas price uh, and what we see elsewhere. The other bit was it accelerated the disconnect between the gas price and the oil price. Because if, if you go back at the, the traditional way of looking at it and how some of these things were modeled in the 80s and the 90s was there was a, there was a decent connect between the gas price and, uh, and the oil price. Whereas by the time of say, say 2009 or, or, or thereabouts, there was almost a $100 gap. And a lot of these gas supply contracts, especially on the basis of what the Russians used to supply uh, the wider European market, was, was tied into uh, the oil price. The, the connect was ingrained in the contracts. Now the Europeans are having none of it. So the Russians are having to, to revise some of these contracts under duress. They, they didn't go there willingly. Uh, Russia always wanted to maintain the connect between the gas price and the oil price. But it is now so, uh, so disconnected that they had, uh, they had little choice to, uh, to do what they did. Now the other argument is, and you're already seeing it in US political circles, is that the gas price? Uh, the gas price in the U.S. is considerably lower uh, than the rest of the world. So, obviously, U.S. players want to export. They want to get more bang for their buck, uh, as it were. And they are looking at export markets. And slowly and slowly, some of the the import terminals are now being turned into export terminals. That's how much gas uh, uh, the U.S. has. And that's perhaps the only way they'll, they'll get a better price for, uh, for what they're uh, sucking out of the ground than, than they're getting in the US. And it is, it is, it is probably more than likely to then, um, and that's what, that's what I call market forces kicking in. The moment the US starts exporting gas, which would be from, from Sabine Pass LNG in, in 2017, you will see it will have a bearing on, on the domestic market. The domestic price will you know, sort of see an uptake, not not a not a, a complete spike, but it's 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 supply and demand. The moment you say we are catering through the world and not just the domestic market, you will see that U.S. gas prices, domestic gas prices, will will go up. They'll be more in in sync with with what what you see at the moment. For instance, in Singapore and Japan, you pay almost double the price uh, of an American procurer would pay uh, back in North uh, back in the U.S.